In this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I wish I knew before doing my yoga teacher training in Rishikesh, India. Make sure you hit the bell and subscribe for more videos about yoga, wellness, and sustainability every Wednesday. After completing my 200 hour YTT in October of 2019, I am now a certified Ashtanga and Vinyasa yoga instructor. I started teaching studio classes almost exactly one year ago and I wanna tell you everything that I wish I knew before getting my 200 hour yoga teaching certification. The first thing you should consider is trying out many different styles of yoga before choosing a yoga teaching program. In Rishikesh, India, there are many different yoga schools that provide all kinds of styles, including Hatha, Ashtanga, Vinyasa, sometimes even a combination of the two. So you wanna make sure that you explore all of the types before picking a program so that you know what kind of yoga you want to teach and where you wanna focus. What kind of style of yoga do you really like to practice? And is there one that you have a certification in or that you would like to have a certification in? You should comment down below and let us know. Depending on what school you choose in Rishikesh, I can only speak for my experience, but I attended one that was a lot more traditional than maybe some of my peers who went to a school in the US or even in Bali and were taught by Americans. So we did a lot of more traditional practices, including our cleansing techniques, um, which are, I think, really interesting to take part in and to really get that full experience of how, you know, traditional yogis live their day to day and their rituals. But just something to be aware of is that you are going to be given that opportunity. My school was very kind and, and respectful of the fact that if you didn't want to try something or if you just weren't comfortable, that is totally fine. One thing that was particularly challenging was the vomit cleansing, which I can leave linked for you if you want to check out that video, um, as well as the catheter, which goes up our nose. I don't know if every school does that, but my school did, and I'm happy that I got to try that and see what it was like. I don't continue those practices now, but it was really interesting, and I think exactly what I was looking for. I was very nervous about my teacher training because I wasn't sure if I knew enough about yoga to be going to get my certification. My intention wasn't necessarily to start teaching studio classes, but more to grow my own practice. And a lot of people start out that way. And even if you're not an expert, even if you can't do a handstand, I still can't do a handstand, that is okay. There are many people in my group who were all different levels, there are people in some groups who are beginners that have never done yoga really and the teachers at least at my school were very understanding very helpful very open and you can make adjustments in yoga that's the beautiful thing so don't be worried if you feel like you're not as advanced as the other students and don't let that get in your head you should make sure that you choose a program that comes recommended by other yoga teachers i chose a program that was recommended by somebody and i'm so glad that i did but one thing that i wish that i'd known is that the yoga alliance certification for a program doesn't necessarily mean that the program is going to be great I know that there are new Yoga Alliance qualifications now, but many of these programs were registered prior to those new requirements. So it's important to check out what the program's really about and get a recommendation. Do not just go by the fact that they are Yoga Alliance certified because their regulation process is not actually that stringent and no one's really coming to make sure that they follow through on those requirements all the way in Rishikesh, India. If you are going abroad for your teacher training, be aware that there could be some language and cultural barriers to your learning. Now this is not necessarily true for every program, especially if, for example, you go to Bali and your teachers are from the same country that you are, but you should just be aware that you are entering a different culture, a different country, different language, and you might need to ask some more questions to clarify, or just be aware that the teaching style might be a little different than what you're used to in your home country. But something to keep in mind if you're going abroad, and especially if you're going to Rishikesh, is it is a beautiful, amazing city, and you are going to want to have some time to explore. I did a one month condensed program, which gave me some time to explore during breaks and go to coffee and dinner, especially on our Sundays off, but I did not really budget time before or after the program just to be in Rishikesh and enjoy and explore the Ganga River. So make sure if you're going to a country, and especially Rishikesh, that you take some time before or after your trip if you're the type that likes to explore. 
And this is important for your visa as well, because when you go to India, the application process is pretty easy for a visa. It's not too expensive, but you will want to make sure that you mark that on your visa application, what dates you will be there for. One thing that I knew, but I don't think I internalized enough, was that the teaching program is going to be a challenge, especially doing the one month condensed program. I was very tired. It was a lot of information and it was totally worth it, but just be prepared to feel challenged and take some time for self-care, be gentle, don't rush, and don't feel bad if it feels like it's a lot because it is. Something that I wish I knew before going to Rishikesh is that they have these amazing organic food stores. Now I'd heard that they had these stores, but I really didn't understand what the extent of their products were. You do not have to bring any supplemental food, especially if you are a vegan or plant-based eater, because these stores have just about every single organic food item and toiletries and journals and mats and literally anything that you could possibly want can be found in Rishikesh. There are a lot of tourists in this area and a lot of people going for yoga school with the same kind of diet and lifestyle. So you really just don't have to worry about overpacking your bag with clothes or with snacks or with things because you're afraid there won't be any food. It's there, trust me. Anything that you could possibly want is probably going to be there. Not to mention all of the delicious restaurants that are vegan and juice bars that are inexpensive. It's lovely, you'll have a great time. I had to do some digging for this information. For opening and closing ceremonies, we often dress in white clothing. So if you don't wanna spend time looking for clothes or buying clothes, or if you have a white outfit that you already like, you might wanna bring one just so that you can wear it for your opening ceremony and for your closing graduation ceremony. Another thing that I wish that I had understood before pursuing my yoga teacher training certification is that while going through the training, you realize just how much there is to know and how much you don't know. And for me, that produced a lot of feelings of imposter syndrome. And then when I was done with my teacher training, I felt a little bit apprehensive about approaching teaching and teaching back home in the US because I felt that I now understood to some extent how big the world and the knowledge of yoga is. I didn't feel like I knew enough to share it to the extent that would honor it. But the truth is when it comes to teaching, you really have to just kind of dive in, use the information that you learned, and you will continue learning along the way, especially if you take time to study more, take more classes from other teachers, take some more philosophy and theory classes, and just trust that you did learn a lot during your program. And regardless, you do have the skills to teach a studio class if that is what you desire. I've written a blog post about some of those feelings of imposter syndrome and just some of the challenges of teacher training. If you want to read more, I'll have it linked down below in the description. Something you should know before going to your teacher training in Rishikesh, India is that most places use a bidet instead of toilet paper. So just be prepared when you have your room in a hotel or when you go to a restaurant that traditionally we use a bidet to go to the bathroom. You will likely have toilet paper at your yoga school and you can always buy it or carry it around with you if you feel the need, but just something to be aware of if that's not something that exists in your country. Another thing to be aware of when you go to Rishikesh is that there are a lot of tourists. As soon as, as I was on my plane, I noticed that many of the people on it with me were also white girls with yoga mats, but most of them are from all over the world really. So just be prepared that you will have people in your yoga school that are from different cultures, different countries. That can be a really, really cool thing. I also think it's important to just be aware that some people might be leaving the country for the first time or they view things a different way where they live. So even though we all have this shared yoga experience, we all still grew up differently, have different backgrounds, and you may not necessarily get along with everybody or agree with everyone or feel similar to everybody, but that's part of the experience and something that you should definitely enjoy as much as you can. You can check out almost my entire experience at Jushi Yoga School in these videos if you wanna take a look. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to share it with all of your friends. Thanks for watching.